first with this desk is mix my chalk paint which is going to be black because the furniture in the room just happens to be black and distressed so that's perfect for chalk painting I would love distressing so what we're going to do is turn this desk over and we're going to paint it from the okay, bottom guys we're going to go ahead and make a small amount of chalk paint to be used on that small little computer desk and what I purchased is Valspar's latex enamel and it's actually just a one half pint which I believe is about eight ounces and we're going to pour that into our plaster of Paris and this is about one tablespoon I'm not going to use the mixture because it's such a small amount and I am going to use the entire um, container here I'm going to use the whole thing because I don't really want to have any of this left over and I'm sure that I won't be needing um, to use black as often so here we go we've got our plaster of Paris in our little bowl and I still take all precautions because sometimes things do spill I'll just add a little bit of water this is one tablespoon of plaster of Paris and without a mixer tonight we're just simply going to use uh, one of our little toss away spoons okay get that all well mixed up and it is going to thicken it's just a little bit too much water but nevertheless if I were to just let it sit a while it will get thick really really thick there we go I feel it in the bottom starting to get a little hard there and less and less bubbles okay so that pancake batter consistency that I'm always talking about is starting to form and that's perfect so now guys we're going to take our black paint again we're painting our furniture black. I'm going to pour the entire content from this little container into my little bowl. And we're going to mix that up. Okay, it's going to get a little thick, as you all know. The entire thing. Continue to stir. See the waves forming? It's already nailing it very, very quickly. Now, before that gets a little too thick beyond my control, I'm going to do a little trick tonight. I'm actually going to go ahead and pour it into a storage container because what's going to happen is since I am painting this little desk bottom side up, I desperately need to allow this to dry just a little bit before I begin to handle it. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and pour it into my storage jar. And that way, um, it's already ready for me to come back and do a second coat on. And simple, all you have to do is secure this tightly. I would put some Saran Wrap over this, keep it airtight, and it will be ready for me to use a second time without problem. So the tighter you can get that seal, guys, the more times um, you'll be able to use it and it'll last a couple of days for you. But I wanted to make sure we learned that tonight. And there we are with our little storage drawer already ready. So let's start painting that computer desk. As you know, homemade chalk paint dries very, very quickly. So I'm going to go very, very fast with this. We're painting the bottom first and then we will go to the top very very fast I'm only going to apply one single coat on the very bottom because I'm preserving my paint um, for the top which is where I want the best presentation but you always start out painting at the bottom quick swift strokes guys this stuff dries really really fast that plaster of Paris connects to it 
and boom you are well on your way okay our computer desk is now right side up and we're going to paint the top as usual we begin by painting on the right side or the left side however you choose to do it but just remember one thing the side that you start on will not be the side that you finish on so you're going to start on the right and work your way all the way across and then when you start to put on the second coat you're going to start on the left first coat is dried and we will need a second coat as you can see from the streaks there and remember I did sand this particular piece I don't normally do that when I'm chalk painting but being that this was a bit um, smooth and had that uh, prefabricated top put on it I felt that I needed to uh, make sure I sand it so it could be smooth and of course I went over it with two coats last time from the left to the right and now um, then back of course uh, right to left and now we're starting again going back and we're going to come back across with another coat on top of this so we're definitely going to make sure as you can see this is already starting to take shape we're starting to cover up that but you know it's kind of nice to leave it because you do kind of leave a distressed effect already and with the chair that I located at a furniture outlet I only had to do some minor touch-ups it just happened to be black and so this is actually going to be a pretty cool set so please hang in there with me we're gonna get this done I love how this is starting to turn out you just continue to keep painting okay, so that black paint is officially dry now and I want to talk a little bit about two different types of distressing the first First being one that everyone has become familiar with and that's the use of sandpaper which is a very very popular uh, way of distressing uh, furniture you can see it everywhere every furniture store including Walmart and Hobby Lobby you're gonna find distressed furniture but there's also this other type which requires just simply the use of paint and in this particular chair here that I wanted to show you it's been painted basically black and then what they in turn did was took another color which as you can see is sort of a mahogany sorry about the darkness here and it's been painted and just kind of streaks just kind of put all over it as if that was normal wear and tear on the actual chair but we know that is not the case so I just wanted to share those two different types of distressing now when it comes to doing actual distressing with sandpaper you definitely want to look at your piece from afar and then basically analyze where would normal wear and tear occur on this tiny desk for instance where would someone be sitting basically we know they're going to sit in the center so your wear and tear or shall I say your fading or distressing is going to occur along the front so here I've started to distress right here along the edges that takes that right off and then I've also gone underneath here just a little bit along the edges we know it's going to occur there and probably a little bit here and along the edges right here Another place it's going to occur is along the legs right here. We know it's going to occur there. And chances are, where there's a foot rest, somebody's going to put their foot a little bit or either find a way to rest their foot right here and rub a little bit off here. So those are normal areas for distressing. So when you're doing your distressing, stand back first, look at the piece, and think about where would normal wear and tear occur versus just kind of going all over the piece because you never know it can start to look a little odd and what will happen is you can overly distress a piece of furniture and like I told you earlier there are basically two types of distressing the one that is done by the manufacturer is simply just paint being put on and what tends to happen is that's going to wear off and then you're actually going to have some real distressing so take a look at your piece from the start. The Min Wax Finishing Paste. It protects and polishes. So I do keep my cloth inside because it needs to stay moist and that way the wax will easily absorb into the cloth and it's much easy to apply. I'm just going to apply a little bit more so that you guys will be able to see that. It's really really soft um, inside. It looks very, as you can see, it looks a little milky and then you just simply just wipe it on. And I'm putting on extra coats for the simple fact that this is going to be a computer desk. So there'll be lots of wear and tear and the computer will be packed up and then unpacked and all of that. So there's going to be a lot of bumping up against this 
um, particular fixture. So guys, that's all it is. We just applied our wax and we're waiting for about another 15 minutes and then we're going to buff this and we should have an, just a medium shine to it because this is chalk paint and that should be a little bit matted. The rest of the furniture in that bedroom um, is black, um, distressed furniture as I stated before, so that's why it was so important to come as close as possible to that original furniture.